Hey, all right, welcome back. Time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. We we'll have uh, Mike Kervin from Excel is Fun. Mike came up with the idea today. How do we generate a random date between two dates? Now, I have to tell you, I'm in the process of rewriting all my books for Excel 2010, so I am uh, the king of generating random data right now. For example, regions. Let's say we had five regions equal R ampersand ran between comma one comma five all right that'll just randomly generate some data down there uh, products how about equal char ran between 65 that's an a and 69 that's going to give us uh, products a through e and just to mix it up a little bit ampersand ran between 11 comma 29 There we go. Miss those parentheses again. I should use Mike's trick and making sure that I had the last one as the black parenthesis. Okay, but dates are a little tough because with dates, uh, it would be nice just to be able to type RAM between 2 1 2008. Uh, but unfortunately, that's how Excel displays the date. That's not really how it's storing the date. If I would press Control and the backwards accent, the Grav accent, you'll see that those dates are 39479. But who really knows? Who knows that? I mean, that would be ridiculous to be able to just type that in. So I end up always using the helper cells up there. Equal RAM between this first date, press F4, comma, and then the second date and press F4. Now I'm going to have to format that as a date. So Control 1, choose Date, choose the format that I'd like, and double click to copy it down all right but for me this is okay because I take the data I convert it to values and those formulas don't persist I don't have to keep these helper cells up here cool trick though if we wanted to keep these formulas and we wanted to get rid of the helper cells up here in the formula bar I'm going to select C1 and press the F9 key F9 will convert that to the real value and then D1 and press the F9 key that will also convert it to the real value and we'll copy that down and now we have a formula that does not rely on these helper cells up there so there you have it that's my method we'll see what Mike has in store for us thanks Mr. Excel hey randomizing dates uh, you do have to be a little bit careful just because a date as Mr. Excel said is actually a serial number now uh, if I were going to do region and product, there's lots of ways to do this. Another way is to use the index. Use that same trick, uh, Mr. Excel. I highlighted the, the range right here and hit F9 and then ran between 1 and 6. So we could just have some, some words in essence we're looking up. And you could do the same thing for product here, but uh, I only have 5. Now date, uh, we'll use the same ran between. But what about this? If you don't have the date in a cell, a helper cell, and you don't have memorized the serial number, just use the date function. Date needs a year, month, and a day, so I'm going to put 2008, comma, the month is 2, comma, the day is 1, so that's February 1st, 2008. I think that's a leap year. I think there was 29 days in that month. Uh, comma, and then the top is going to be date 2008 comma 331 close parentheses close parentheses so that's another way and if you highlight these right here in F9 you can see they actually give you the uh, serial number so that's one nice use of the date function you can actually get the serial number uh, another way if you have um, an earlier version to not 2007 and you don't have the analysis tool pack added in under tools add in you don't have the ran between you'd have to do something like this how about equals date so that's the starting point that's the minimum and we need to add to it some randomized number between 1 and 59 because there's 59 days between uh, this date and the uh, final date so we want to use the int function. The integer takes the integer part, always going down of some number. And then we use RAND. RAND will generate a number between 0 and 1. And we're going to do not 59. So we'll take RAND, which uh, generates a number between 0 and uh, 1. But imagine if we got 0.5 here, right? 0.5 times uh, actually 60 would give us 30 days, so it add 30 days. But the thing about RAND is it can get really close to 0, which means this can add 0, which is fine, because sometimes we want to add 0. We want this bottom date. But on the top end, we want to only add 59. So we actually added the extra number here. That way we go from 0 to 59, because it'll never quite get to uh, 60. Close parentheses and Control Enter. And there you have two formulas for randomizing dates between 
February 1st, 2008, and March 31st, 2008. All right, we'll see you next trick. Oh, okay, now Mike, you confused me on that one because you wanted numbers between 0 and 59, and so you asked for the Rand times 60. One more. I had to come here to convince myself, so I wanted random numbers from 1 to 10, and I used Rand times 11 using your theory, and sure enough, we get numbers from 1 to 10, but what I guess that I missed was that you also wanted a zero. So here we have some uh, zero showing up as well. So if you use ran times 60, you're going to get 60 different numbers ranging from zero up to 59. Uh, so if I really want random numbers from 1 to 10, uh, then what I need to do is ran times 10 and then at the end plus 1 and we'll copy that down. Just have a little frequency distribution over here. As I press F9, you'll see that we are now getting numbers from 1 to 10. So, Mike, you're absolutely right. You threw me for a little loop. I had to come prove it to myself. Why did I ever question it? Hey, for everyone out there, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. Excel is fun.